in your business. And not only do you have a story, you have a story worth sharing. Your story matters. In fact, your story, now I, I love the new reset, right? And I love Pivotal, I love all the things that are coming, but I would argue that your story is the most powerful tool you have in your Plexus toolbox. Right. Who here right now is here today because somebody next to you told their story? You know there's a, a single mom of two in your community. There's a family struggling right now in your network. There is somebody that is friends with you on social media that is waiting to hear your story to bring leads to go chase their own. And so I want to implore you today to use your story. And I just wonder when we leave this place, like Rebecca Folk said, that we don't just get into this camp high, but we actually take our story and put it out into the ether, put it out into the world, because they need to hear from you, because we've got something that nobody else has got. Right. Really I'll never forget our beginning of our journey in Plexus. My wife, Cassie, is also a Diamond Ambassador. We would stay up all night and watch Diamond Documentaries. Anybody? All night. We would watch stories from Miss Sheila Medina. Now you can never take the word Sheila Medina without the word Miss on the front, so that's just a, that's a pro tip. That's for you. Yeah. Miss Sheila Medina, we would listen to Sonia Dudley, Sarah Marble, Jen Hawkins. We would eat it all up, and their stories released us to ask the question, could Plexus change our lives? My friends here, can you lean in for me just a second? We are not here to solely sell supplements. We are in the business of changing lives and redeeming stories. The supplements are just a vehicle to that end need. Each of you play a critical role in someone else's story, and they play a critical role in yours. We were designed to have our lives intersect one another, live in community, and be impacted by each other's story. So what does that say about story? If it's that powerful, what does it say? It tells us that stories are sometimes much more stronger than facts. Facts tell now all of a sudden, all of you in Instagram want just go, oh, excuse me. I get it. But facts tell, but stories sell belief. Facts are great, can they back up your belief? But the story really, really does sell that belief. It is shared in one story that ignites the belief of someone else and in who return feels compelled to tell their story to other people. So let's talk about how we can harness our story, the power of storytelling in our business. And now, here's what I know that's happening this moment. From the front to the back to the sides to the very edges of this arena, you're thinking one thought, some of us. But my story doesn't matter. You know what I have to say to you? When did you start believing that lie? Was it the moment that someone left your team for somewhere else? Was it the moment that you didn't earn the trip, you didn't hit the rank, that you fell back in rank? Was that the moment that you thought, well, my story doesn't matter because my story doesn't look like their story that's so much more successful than mine? Hear me, because I know that a lot of it's going to be hard for us to receive this today, but I want you to receive this. It's not about your rank, it's not about how many people you signed up, your story matters because you are you. Woo! Your story is your story and it's nobody else's. Your story is going to reach people that our story cannot. Your story matters and it's beautiful because you have a heart in your chest, you have lungs in your breath, you have a soul with inside you and your story matters. Cassie and I are so humble when people come up to us all the time and they say, oh my goodness, Rainies, I love your story. I wish my story was like yours, but I always say to them, you want nine children too? <laughs> the husband immediately is like, never mind, we don't want your story. We good. Why don't you ever stop these people? Keep coming, let's go. Here's the thing, when you have nine children, you have our story, you know what you get, especially when they're teenagers. Any, any teen parents out there? A never endless stream of opinions on the picture that you just posted on social media. Dad, oh my goodness, your head is so shiny in that picture, I cannot believe it. I'll let you guess which one it is that actually does that Here's a good picture. Also, when you have nine children, you do understand you want this story. Our van, the cast is going to hate this, babe, I'm sorry, but our van is a never-ending buffet of chicken nuggets and 
goldfish. We're starting on that, man. I can save y'all a lot of money on food next year for convention. We'll just bring our van. It'll be like a food truck. <laughs> Open it up. And push me and keep going. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Your story doesn't have to be like ours. It doesn't have to be like your neighbor's. It doesn't have to be someone that you've seen on the stage today. It's your story and it's beautiful. So stop comparing your story with other people's story. Good stories, though, they do follow a formula. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that formula today. And you can use this formula to maximize the impact of your story. Here's number one. You ready? First, when you share your story, I want you to use a measured amount of vulnerability. Underline measured. Some of you guys start out every day like the soap opera. 803, life is already terrible. Still. It's all right, Frank. You're slim. You're going to be all right. <laughs> Brie Brown says, vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage. I like that. Those are powerful pillars for our own stories. Good stories have an art, a challenge, or an obstacle that must be overcome. And there's a struggle there, right? There's a struggle in our story that builds character. It builds of who we are. It shows of where we've been, where we're at, where we're going. And one thing your audience all has in common, anybody you speak to about places, they have in common this idea that they, too, have problems. You're not the only one with issues. And when you are authentic and vulnerable and use that measure of vulnerability, they can be relatable to other people and say, I'm not alone. I'm struggling too. So when you share real trials, real triumphs with your audience, they begin to believe that they're not by themselves in this journey we call life. Their struggles are real and they matter. Next, know your voice. This is a big one. Acknowledge where you've been, where you are, where you're headed, but do not try to insert someone else's story into yours. You can borrow it, right, and give them credit. But here's the thing. Mimicking someone else's voice because it sounds better isn't compelling. It's actually confusing. If you're not careful, you're going to confuse your audience that you're trying to reach, so value your story. Can I tell you, how can we expect others to value our story if we don't value it ourselves? Next, I want you to paint a picture for people. Invite people into your story by painting a clear picture of the problem, the solution, and the hope that you have. People will not listen to your story if it does not answer a tangible problem. I see sometimes we put these amazing stories and, oh, my life was terrible, and then it was great. Mention Plexus. Tell them what it is. Don't keep them guessing. You wave this incredible tale of success and fail to provide the consumer with a solution that led to that result. Paint a clear picture for them. Reveals to your audience what life could be like for them. Okay, so we talked about kind of like the art of storytelling, but there is actually a science behind this. Let's talk about the importance of asking pointed questions, guiding your audience to solutions, and calling them into action. For example, Sharing product information is wonderful. Where are my product gurus out there, right? You know every strain of every scientific name in our ProBio 5, right? You know who you are. You know who you are. You may raise your hand, but your, your, your sponsor next to you is like, he's talking about you. <laughs> but it's, and as much as it's wonderful to know what the products are about, I would guess that maybe sometimes it's not as powerful as asking a pointed question. Instead of saying, do you know how many strands of pro of, of, of <laughs> How many strands of, of bacteria are in our probio 5 that can help your genome? I'm sorry, I just wanted a latte. What's going on here? <laughs> but isn't it more powerful to say something like, are you happy with your health? Are you living the best version of yourself right now? See, in our busy world, where we are consuming information faster than ever before, a pointed question that leads to an inspiring story will spark curiosity and open the door for your customers to come right into your organization. The next thing you need to remember is this. People stop listening if they cannot see themselves in your story. Let me say this again. People will stop listening if they cannot see themselves in your story. They don't want you to be the hero. They want to be the hero. Why do I know this? Because I want to be the hero. Position yourself as a sage in your story, not the savior. A lot of you are great gurus and plexus, but sometimes we need to go away from being gurus to being guides. And 
and guiding them to the correct solutions they need for their journey. And sharing what you've learned along your journey can help them achieve the transformation they desire. Okay, there's one more thing I want to talk to you about real quick. Okay? Out of time. A good story is just a story unless it compels us to do something afterwards. Our goal is to have them start their journey, which is fantastic and amazing, but in Plexus, we want to inspire them to actually take that next step and join us. Tell a great story, but tell them how to join you and start their own story. So, some might call this a bait and switch. They say, man, that feels like a bait and switch. How many have ever heard that word? That's just a bait and switch. I'm going to go ahead and confess, I, Kyle Rainey, am a bait and switcher. I am. You're thinking, what do you, what do you mean? I'm baiting other people with my story of how my life has been transformed, and I'm trying to help others switch the direction of their own story. I'm a bait and switcher. I'm okay with that. I'm going to put out all the bait I can because I want your life to switch around like it has for me. And the difference, though, is between the cliche self and bait switch and ours, we're working with purpose. Amen. We're working on purpose. And we have a mission in front of us that's about people. So when you leave here ignited today with a new passion for Plexus, I want you to tell your story. Why? Because it matters. We tell stories, my friends, so that others can see pieces of their own story in ours. Be vulnerable. Find your voice. Embrace its uniqueness. Paint a picture of what was, what is, and what could be. Ask pointed questions. Approach your story with humility. Guide others to a solution they need. Challenge your customers to take action. Show them what steps to take. And I promise if you do these things, you will inspire others to pursue their own dreams. Your story and mine has brought us here to this place. This place right here. In this season. In this moment for a time such as this. You are not here by accident. You didn't stumble into this life. You are not here by accident. I believe you're here for such a grander reason. And your narrative has placed you here in this moment, at this time, at this place, with your gifts on your team, ready to take over the world. Amen. And here's my hope for you. Is that together, we have many more tales to be told as we see lives change. One story at a time. Thank you.